can see a lot going on in this scene. We have this aircraft down. It's on fire. It happened very close to these homes with a loud bang. Everybody came out of their homes to check it out. So we're going to try to find out the cause. So this is the NTSB final report from January 15th, 2020. Uh, one fatal. So let's check out what happened. So this is the end up scene after they got the fire out. And you can see it did clip this home as it was coming in. Here's the analysis. The pilot was conducting a personal flight to relocate the twin engine back to his home base. There was a small leak, but they fixed it. They added about two and a half gallons of fuel to the tank. But another witness reported hearing popping sounds as the airplane approached the destination airport and thought that one of the engines was trying to restart while it flew overhead. The witness also stated that the landing gear and flaps were extended. So the third witness saw that the aircraft uh, appeared to be struggling to stay airborne and the left wing dropped the airplane momentarily stabilized the left wing dropped again banking airplane further to the left the airplane continued to the left when the nose dropped and was soon out of view from Bonneville Sky Park and we're now uh, really heading uh, northwest uh, just around Hill Air Force uh, space and then we'll be joining you so that was moments before the plane crashed and you can hear there's no emergency, there's no signs of panic or anything that the um, the pilot thought that something was wrong. You can see from the propellers here and the damage of the aircraft. It's leaning more towards fuel exhaustion. Um, here you can see that the houses were starting to be affected and burning. They were burning. So good thing firefighters got on scene before this house went up in flames as well. This is the aircraft here, 1969 Cessna uh, T310. Here it is flying overhead. This was actually right before the crash. So the witness was hearing the popping sounds, came outside of the house, looked up, took a picture. It was right above his head. You can see landing gears are down. November 5805 uh, Mike was the tail number. And then here's the pilot's information for those of you who are interested. 64-year-old male. 15,000 hours estimated flight time. And then this is kind of where it happened. So it was heading for that Ogden airport there and ended up right around here in this kind of subdivision. Luckily, it didn't hit any houses. So the pilot did a good job of at least, you know, not hurting anybody else. Here's the Roy Fire Station right close by across the street, which is a good thing because now we're going to get on scene and see what the firefighters did. So they're pulling up to the scene, they get the call, and now you got active fire. So as always, you want to put the fire out as soon as possible and check for survivors. So here it is, fire's on scene. They can see the smoke, and they're going to go ahead and try to put this thing out as safely as they can, keep the people away. You can see that explosion and how dangerous it can be for firefighters on scene. That's why you want to keep people away, make sure scene is safe, and make sure you have all your personal protective equipment before getting and attacking this thing. Post-accident examination of the airplane revealed that the left propeller blade exhibited minimal rotation signatures, which is consistent of left engine producing low to no power at the time of impact. The visual evidence indicated that the left propeller was not feathered at the time of impact. And then also the right propeller blade showed evidence of the engine operating at mid to low power at the time of impact. An examination of the airframe and engines revealed no evidence of pre-accident mechanical malfunctions or anomalies that would have precluded normal operation. It is likely that during the flight, the left wing tip fuel tank remaining fuel was exhausted, resulting in the loss of power to the left engine. Available evidence suggests that the left engine shut down during the flight due to fuel starvation, resulting in the airplane yawing to the left with a decrease in performance following by a banking left. So as the scene comes to a close, you can see this firefighter pretty much got everything out. He's just making sure that it's cold and out so they don't have to come back with people complaining that the fire is still going. And the NTSB probable cause is the pilot's inadequate pre-flight fuel planning and fuel management, which resulted in a total loss of power to the left engine due to fuel exhaustion. Also, causal was the pilot's failure to follow the one engine in operative checklist and maintain the airplane's minimal controllable airspeed by properly configuring the airplane which resulted in the loss of airplane control this aircraft crash was almost three years ago and i feel like it's really important to revisit them and see what lessons can be learned so you can see i've made a bunch of ntsb final reports you can watch you can also follow me on instagram this is arfanam kioni i'll see you guys next time